San Diego is rich in aviation history, and it all began with gliders. Welcome to Sci PK. I'm PK, and I'm in Torrey Pines Glider Port in San Diego, California, the mecca of gliding and soaring. And these cliffs and their westerly winds shaped American aviation in more ways than you think. When you visit the official website for Torrey Pines Glider Port, you can see this wonderfully written book. As you can see, the book is authored by Dr. Gary B. Fogel, or as my peers and I call him, Professor. Okay, so, Dr. Fogel, how you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? You see, Dr. Fogel is an awesome guy. Besides his awesome accomplishments in computer science and biology, he's also, I dare say, an expert on motorless aircraft. Also, he teaches the introductory course of aerospace engineering at San Diego State University, a class I attended. Tell us what you know about the, the early days of Torrey Pines and how it came into fruition. Sure, sure, sure. It was through people like yourself. So um, at that time, in the 1920s, going to the 1930s, 1920s, we had here in San Diego a fantastic interest in aviation. It had already been a Navy aviation facility for some time, but there was a lot of local interest around Charles Lindbergh's flight in 1927. That aircraft was built here in San Diego, and it was built by a gentleman in part uh, named Holly Bolas. Uh, Holly Bolas was the superintendent of construction on the Spirit of St. Louis. Bolas himself was also a very big glider fan. He started building his own series of gliders here in San Diego. He was able to set some uh, endurance records for national records for gliding endurance, not just a few minutes, but hours, like nine hours long flight in a, in a sailplane in 1929-1930. The Lindberghs Charles and Ann Lindbergh were so amazed by that, they came back to San Diego specifically to learn how to fly gliders from Holly Bolas and got very interested in it. And now because the Lindberghs were back in town, all the young people in San Diego were very interested in getting into gliders because that was the cool thing. Torrey Pines Glider Port story officially starts in 1930 when it first opened to motorless flight. It was instantly a loved location for these flights and amongst the demographics of people who showed up were high schoolers. So in local high schools, in San Diego, the woodshop teachers weren't building chairs for their students or desks, they were building gliders. And the kids would then take them out on the weekend and try to fly them wherever they could, which was great fun, but you'd learn by doing and learn by crashing and they had to repair and hopefully no one gets hurt. They found a beach uh, north of Torrey Pines, north of Torrey Pines Cliffs, so it was nice and flat and could tow the, air, the glider behind the car with a rope and get it up into the air and come back down and land. It turned out that in February of 1930, uh, Charles Lindbergh had used a Bola sailplane on a flight from Mount Soledad in La Jolla all along the cliffs at Torrey Pines up to a landing at Del Mar, which was at the time a distance record here locally, regionally, Western America for the longest distance of a sailplane flight, 20, you know, a few miles, five miles at the time. Uh, and so the students were like, well, if that cliff is good enough for Lindbergh, it must be good enough for me. So they tried to launch their gliders off the beach below the cliffs and with the rope, get off the rope, and then you try to soar in the lift of the cliff. Uh, as the wind is hitting the cliff, it has nowhere else to go but up. And if you're in a sailplane, you can fly in that lifting current uh, and soar as long as the wind is going and then land back down on the beach. Um, that was fine. A lot of the beachgoers at the time didn't necessarily like the fact that there were these glider guys running with their cars and airplanes on the beach. They wanted to do fishing instead. And so in about 1935, 1936, Another gentleman named Woody Brown helped these younger students uh, learn how to fly off the top of the cliff and land on the top again. In 1936, Woodley Brown became the first glider to jump off the cliff and land back on top. Which was very brave because it's a 300 foot high cliff. It's very steep as you'll see later today maybe. Uh, and um, got the courage to go do that and show that that was possible. And after that, the glider port was born. Uh, and flying has happened there ever since except for the period of World War II, where it was closed uh, and converted into a U.S. Army training facility, ironically for anti-aircraft training and also assault uh, training. Uh, and then we've had a few times where it's been closed because of things like the nearby U.S. Open golf tournament or the other, other events that have happened, uh, but mostly continuous flying since uh, World War II. We met this awesome gentleman who taught us about his remote control glider. And the video for that is in the card on the top right of your screen or in the description. And at the, at the time in the 1930s, there were a lot of these kinds of facilities for gliding all up and down the coastline. Just like there used to be old roller coasters up and down the coastline in California, there used to be glider sites up and down the coastline. And this site is the really the only true remaining um, site from that coastal type of ridge soaring 
uh, site in Western America. My interview with Dr. Fogel lasted quite a while, so if you're interested in learning more about Torrey Pines' history and the technologies that came out of it, like the Dead Man's Pulley or the uh, Robinson Variometer, you should check out the video I uploaded on my channel with the full, unedited interview um, you could find on the card to the top right or in the description below or just on my channel. Over the many years of its operation history, many national and international records have been set in this prime soaring location. That is why Torrey Pines Glider Port has not only been immortalized in San Diego history, but United States history as a whole. Thanks to people like Gary Fogel. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video as it helps out a lot. And as always, until next time, stay curious. Thank you, watch video. Thank you, watch video. Woo! San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was instantly a love, bro. You can't get me. You're not getting me.